learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to explain the concept of organizing explain the process of organizing describe the importance of organizing explain the meaning advantages and disadvantages of functional organization explain the meaning advantages and disadvantages of divisional organization explain the meaning advantages and disadvantages of formal and informal organization distinguish between formal and informal organization explain the concept of delegation and decentralization describe the importance of delegation and decentralization and distinguish between delegation and decentralization meaning and steps organizing organizing is that managerial process which seeks to define the role of each individual towards the attainment of enterprise objectives with due regard to establishing authority responsibility relationships among all and providing for coordination in the enterprise as an inbuilt device for obtaining harmonious groups action definition in the words of theo hamen organizing is the process of defining and grouping the activities of the entire process and establishing the authority and relationship among them organizing in management refers to the relationship between people work and resources used to achieve the common objectives steps in organizing management function of organizing completes when it passes through different stages the important among them are discussed below identification and division of work the first step in the process of organizing involves identifying and dividing the work that has to be done in accordance with previously determined plans work is divided into manageable tasks so that duplication can be avoided and workload can be shared among employees departmentalization once work has been divided into small and manageable activities then those activities which are similar in nature are grouped together this process is called departmentalization assignment of duties once the departments are created each department is placed under the charge of an individual called departmental head then each job is allocated to an individual according to his knowledge and skill there should be a proper match between the nature of jobs and the ability of an individual establishing reporting relationships in the organization each employee has some authority as well as responsibility it is necessary that every individual must know whom he has to take orders from and to whom he is answerable importance of organizing importance of organizing the organizing function is very important in the business as it coordinates all other areas of business operations the importance of this function can be well explained with the help of following points benefits of specialization in organizing every individual is assigned a part of total work and not the whole task this division of work into smaller units and repetitive performance leads to specialization 
thus organizing promotes specialization which in turn leads to efficient and speedy performance of tasks clarity in working relationship it helps in creating well defined jobs and also clarifying the limits of authority and responsibility of each job the superior subordinate relationship is clearly defined in organizing effective administration it provides a clear description of jobs and related duties which helps to avoid confusion and duplication clarity in working relationships enables proper execution of work which results in effective administration optimum utilization of resources the proper assignment of jobs avoids overlapping or duplication of work this helps in preventing confusion and minimizing the wastage of resources and efforts adoption to change a properly designed organizational structure is flexible which facilitates adjustment to changes in workload caused by change in external environment related to technology products resources and markets development of personnel sound organization encourages initiative and relative thinking on part of the employees when managers delegate their authority it reduces their workload so they can focus on more important issues related to growth and innovation this also develops the subordinate's ability and helps him to realize his full potential expansion and growth it helps in growth and diversification of an enterprise by adding more job positions departments products lines new geographical territories etc organization structure structure of organization an organization structure is a framework of authority and responsibility relationships between various positions in the organization and also clarifies who reports to whom it is a set of planned relationships between groups of related functions and between physical factors and personal required for the achievement of organizational goals types of organizational structure the type of structure adopted by an enterprise will vary with the nature types and volume of its activities two commonly adopted organizational structures are functional structure and divisional structure functional structure in functional structure activities are grouped and departments are created on the basis of specified functions to be performed activities related to a function are grouped into a single unit with a view to give a well defined direction to the whole group for instance in an industrial enterprise the major functions like production finance marketing and personal may be grouped into different departments suitability of functional structure the functional organization is highly suitable for an enterprise engaged in the production and distribution of a single product or a small number of products it is very useful where it is desired to introduce specialization in the performance of various functions like production finance marketing etc divisional structure the divisional structure is formed by creating a set of autonomous units or divisions which are coordinated by the central headquarters for example a company may have three divisions to manage garments 
cosmetics and leather goods etc suitability of divisional structure divisional structure is suitable for the firms having several products and each product is categorized by different technology resources production process and market it is suitable for firms having coverage of wide geographical area or having different market segments formal and informal organization formal and informal organization in all organizations there are two types of organizational forms are existed one is the professional system and the other is more into personal and which is informal as well when the employees are guided by rules and procedures this is said to be formal organization formal organization formal organization refers to the organization structure which is designed by the management to accomplish a particular task it specifies clearly the boundaries of authority and responsibility and there is a systematic coordination among the various activities to achieve organizational goals informal organization interaction among people at work gives rise to a network of social relationships among employees called the informal organization informal organization emerges from within the formal organization when people interact beyond their officially defined roles characteristics of informal organization based on formal organization this is based on formal organization where people also have informal relations first of all the formal organization is established and then informal organization is created out of it it has no written rules and procedures in this organization there are no written rules and procedures to govern interrelationship but there are group norms which have to be observed independent channels of communication in this organization relations among different people are not defined because a person at the lowest rank can have direct contact with the person at the highest level it is not deliberately created informal organization is not deliberately created it emerges out of mutual relationship and tastes it has no place on organization chart informal organization has no place on the properly prepared organization chart moreover there is no information about it even in the organization manual delegation delegation in every organization whatever may be the nature a single person or a manager cannot manage his duties in an effective way unless he is dividing the work among his subordinates this process we can call as delegation process delegation refers to the downward transfer of authority from a superior to a subordinate delegation involves granting of authority to subordinates with a view to make them perform the assigned duties it enables the managers to distribute their workload of work to others and concentrate on important functions which only they can perform better elements of delegation the basic elements of delegation are authority responsibility and accountability authority 
Authority refers to the right of an individual to command his subordinates and to take action within the scope of his or her position. Authority is needed to discharge a given responsibility. The power to produce or use raw materials, spend money or ask for allotment of money, to hire or fire people, etc., has to be delegated to individuals to whom the work is assigned. Responsibility Responsibility refers to the obligation of a subordinate to properly perform the assigned duty. The superior must determine clearly the task or duty to be assigned to the subordinates. The duty must be expressed in terms of functions or in terms of objectives. Accountability Accountability is to answerability for the outcome of the assigned task. The subordinate is held accountable to the superior. Accountability originates because the manager has a right to require an accounting for the authority delegated and task assigned to a subordinate. The process of delegation of authority is incomplete unless accountability is created. Importance of Delegation Importance of Delegation Delegation ensures that the subordinates perform tasks on behalf of the manager, thereby reducing his workload and providing him with more time to concentrate on important matters. Effective delegation leads to the following benefits. Effective management. By delegation, managers pass their routine work to their subordinates. So, they get more time to concentrate on more important matters. This will help them to excel in new areas and be more efficient and effective. Employee Development In the process of management, the work is passed on to the employees. This gives them opportunity to use their talents and increases their experience. It makes them better leaders and decision makers. Thus, delegation helps in preparing better future managers. Motivation of Employees when a superior passes on the responsibility to his subordinate, it is not merely sharing work but also sharing trust. This develops a feeling of belongingness and commitment for the subordinate. It improves his confidence and he feels encouraged to improve his performance. Facilitation of Growth while passing on a responsibility and authority, managers have to take care of the qualification and capability of the employee. This division of work and specialization provides a ready workforce to take the leading position in a new venture and thus help in the expansion of the enterprise. Basis of Management Hierarchy Delegation establishes authority, responsibility, relationships between employees. The degree and flow of authority determines who is to report to whom. It also decides the power enjoyed by each job position in the organization. Decentralization 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 means delegation of authority at every level. It is the even and systematic distribution of decision, making authority to the lowest level of management. Under decentralization, every employee working at different levels gets some share in the authority. Importance of Decentralization Decentralization is a fundamental step 
and its importance can be understood from the following points. Develops initiative among subordinates. It helps to promote self-reliance and confidence amongst the subordinates. This is because lower managerial levels have been given freedom to take their own decisions and they learn to depend on their own judgment. It also helps to identify those executives who have the potential to become dynamic leaders. Develops managerial talent for the future. Formal training along with experience of handling independent assignments helps to create a reservoir of qualified and capable managers who can take up more challenging positions in the upcoming ventures of the organization. Quick decision making. Under decentralization, authority to make decisions is placed in the hands of those who are responsible for executing the decisions. Since decisions are taken at levels nearest to the point of execution, there is no delay or distortion of information. Growth and Diversification Use of decentralization becomes imperative when an institution carrying the manufacture of one product wants to diversify in the other different ranges of the product. So, decentralization facilitates growth and diversification of products and markets. Relief to top management it helps to reduce the amount of direct supervision over subordinates by giving them freedom to take decision and act on their own. This reduces the workload of top executives and they can devote their time and attention to important policy matters. Advantages of Decentralization 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 means delegation of authority at every level. It is the even and systematic distribution of decision-making authority to the lowest level of management. Under decentralization, every employee working at different levels gets some share in the authority. Advantages the importance of decentralization can be discussed with the help of following points. Reduces the burden on top executives. Decentralization relieves the top executives of the burden of performing various functions. Centralization of authority puts the whole responsibility on the shoulders of an executive and his immediate group. This reduces the time at the disposal of top executives who should concentrate on other important managerial functions. Facilitates diversification. Under decentralization, the diversification of products, activities and markets etc. is facilitated. A centralized enterprise with the concentration of authority at the top will find it difficult and complex to diversify its activities and start the additional lines of manufacture or distribution. To provide product and market emphasis A product loses its market when new products appear in the market on account of innovations and changes in the customer's demand. In such cases, Authority is decentralized to the regional units to render instant service taking into account the price, quality, delivery, novelty, etc. It promotes motivation. Decentralization of authority promotes the morale of the employees and create a feeling that they are important to the business. This will improve the productivity and efficiency. 
Executive Development When the authority is decentralized, executives in the organization will get the opportunity to develop their talents by taking initiative which will also make them ready for managerial positions. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. The process of defining and grouping activities as well as establishing authority relationships among them. It is highly crucial as it leads to division of work, clarity in reporting relationships, utmost utilization of resources, growth, powerful administration and wonderful creativity. Organizational structure is the framework within which managerial and operating tasks are performed. It can be functional or divisional. Functional structure groups activities on the basis of functions. The crucial benefits of such a structure are specialization, superb control, high level managerial efficiency and ease in training employees. The disadvantages of functional empires are conflict of interest, inflexibility and restriction in managerial development. Divisional structure groups activities on the basis of products. The advantages are integration, product specialization, greater accountability, flexibility, better coordination and more initiative. Formal organization is designed by the management to achieve organizational goals. Its advantages are fixation of responsibility, clarity of roles, and unity of command and effective accomplishment of goals. Informal organization arises out of interaction amongst people at work. Delegation is the transfer of authority from superior to subordinate. It has three elements, authority, responsibility and accountability. Decentralization is delegation of authority throughout the organization.